Tara Cummins, and she's head brainstormer, which is a really cool title. Can you yeah. share with us um, the most successful campaign to date that you've either worked on yourself or that you've been affiliated with? Yeah, um, I you know I, one of my favorite examples is uh, is re, was a uh, high end retail location here in Hawaii that I was brought in on the tail end and there really wasn't a lot of time to do some of the prep work that we might normally want to do um, before we before we develop a campaign. I took the campaign because I knew it would be a challenge and I still felt that we could make a difference. Uh, with their end goals. Their end goals being to drive some traffic to a VIP event that was a precursor to a three-day sales event. And this particular company is a little bit unique in the sense that they don't, um, they service a, a, a portion of a person's life as opposed to a lifetime. And so they're constantly looking for new customers. Mm -hmm. Uh, but because we didn't have a lot of time, we didn't we, we weren't able to develop a lot of content. They were in a fairly new phase of social media. They'd been using it, but they hadn't really been doing it with any kind of direction. So they sort of had an audience. Their audience didn't really know what to expect of them. So we took existing content, developed a couple of hashtags, and um, created a small campaign with basically what we had. Um, mm -hmm. Again, no custom content. Uh, time. So that's a real challenge for social media people when when creating custom content isn't an option. So we we uh, identified uh, mostly videos that were relevant to the customers in in a variety of ways, and started sharing those and tying it back to uh, why it was relevant to the organization and, and to the product. So at the end of the day, we increased. Uh, you know. We wanted to drive traffic to the store. We, we were able to identify that the more social media engagement they had, the better their conversions, which their conversions were already quite high. Mm -hmm. um, we were also able to grow their audience uh, by about 80% on Facebook and another mm -hmm. another percent on, on uh, Twitter, just through you know best practices, engagement, and, and sharing. And uh, a little bit of strategy, a little bit of thought mm -hmm. go gone into it, some planning. And uh, then we had 80% of the RSVPs for the uh, VIP event were off the, were off our social media um, wow. channels. Yeah, which was really exciting because they were all new customers, all new potential customers. Mm -hmm. It was. So what we were able to show was that if we take a strategic approach and we do some planning, uh, that we can make a direct impact on the business. We were also able to show a, a direct sales uh, right off of social media. Very cool. Yep. It was, you know, also a challenge for social media and digital marketing pros is that last touch attribution issue with with where mm -hmm. does the sale actually come from? Sure. So, but we were actually through some communication and the rest able to identify one sale, and it was a large, um, over seven thousand dollar sale. Nice. So. Yeah, so the ROI on that campaign was pretty clear, and um, I'm really, I was really, really proud of it. And I, I probably would not do quite that kind of a campaign again. It was just a little too close, uh, too tight of a timeline. Mm -hmm. But um, as I said, I took the project, project knowing it would be a challenge, and um, kind of asking myself, can you do, can, can you put your money where your mouth is, girl? And so, uh, I, so I did it, and and uh, I'm, I was really, really, really proud of of that of that effort. Awesome, excellent. And what was the time frame for that? Um, it was less than two weeks. Wow, that's amazing. Well, congrats. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah. you've done some significant work in making headway for um, determining ROI on yeah. social media. What are the latest advancements that you've been researching and sharing? Um, I think you know one of the, the hot topics for me with ROI, it, specifically in social media, not necessarily in the broader scope of, of digital media, is is that the influence of the word of mouth and, and how to track and value some of those those pieces. Mm -hmm. um, we know that that uh, customers, clients, potential partners don't always act immediately when they first see an offer, a promo, or even your brand. And so we want to try and um, create a timeline for how those, how those touch points affect 
uh, the process, mm -hmm. and then also the value of a word of mouth. It's a little bit building on the influencer concept. Um, so certainly, influencers have uh, more ability to reach a wider audience, but that in and of itself doesn't necessarily have value. Just a wide audience doesn't doesn't necessarily have value. We know we also know that. And so um, I'm trying to identify ways for companies, and this is definitely, definitely, definitely a work in progress, but I'm trying to identify ways for companies to uh, really value some of their social media efforts on an, on an ROI, with an, with, an, with an eye towards ROI on, on that word of mouth piece. And, and that word of mouth piece is still evolving as well. But there's some research out there that shows that it is truly valuable to ROI and um, I just think it's a, I think it's an important element for if you're taking a long-term approach to social media, which everybody should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so while you might only look at it in the context of a campaign, you, it should be something that you continue to track post-campaign so that you really get a view of uh, what the campaign's effectiveness was. I'm really really hopeful. I mean, as a matter of fact, just today I was contacted to um, to to be a tester for some new pro for a new product that. Is going to help us uh, with with ROI. I I'm really hopeful that in the next year, maybe the next year and a half, um, you know, customer digital CRM will will start to become um, the secondary leg behind uh, the analytics mm -hmm. of, of uh, social media. I think we're headed in that direction. I'm really excited to see it happen, um, and that's going to really make the business uh, results and the ROI more clear for businesses who, who, who want to take a long-term and even a short-term view on their social media efforts. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. So that brings me to my next question, which is um, what trends are you expecting to see? I know uh, we just started a new year, so 2011 is now behind us. And um, you know, I do expect, like you said, some, some major changes to come by way of that, but what else? Um, in addition to the social CRM piece, I think uh, we're, we're going to see, especially with uh, Facebook apps and the rest, more gaming uh, mm -hmm. in the social space um, and, and engaging people in a, in a, in a fun, fun way, um, in a stickier way um, than, than we've seen in the past. And I think we're also going to, uh, video is going to be a huge piece of content. You know this, you're doing, you're doing this via video as opposed to an a e-interview or, or any, other, any of the other resources that you could have used. Um, and I also think you know, we cannot discount the fact that mobile has hit its, it, it's, it, it has its place now permanently mm -hmm. in our pockets nice. and that that's going to affect, um, you know, most of us, they're, they're projecting, I've seen projections, um, I think it was by Morgan Stanley, they're projecting that uh, iPhone and iPad or smartphone and, and uh, pad, tablet use of digital, consumption of digital media is going to overtake our desktop in the next 10 years. So, you know, one of the things that's interesting to me about that, whether that's actually, whether that number is actually true or not, mm -hmm. is, is it's less relevant than the, than the key takeaway for me, which is, you, uh, when you get on a, a smartphone or a tablet, you almost inherently start using social media more because it because it can be more immediate and it's 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 you can do it when you're out and about, which is kind of part of the fun of, of social media. So I think that that's going to directly impact uh, the use of social media and the number of people that are using it regularly, including sites like. Twitter and Foursquare, some of the sites that you know aren't quite the 800-pound gorillas that they that some of the others are, but um, are really great when you're on the fly. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I have to mention we'll be in um, Hawaii very soon, a couple of weeks now, uh, February 13th or 15 for PubCon. Um, and so because you're local, I have to ask you maybe two places that our attendees must try while they're in Hawaii. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try and go. Um, hi, I'm, I'll go high end first because I'm a little bit of, of a foodie. Okay. I recently had a chance to eat at Morimoto's in Waikiki, mm. and I, if you know Morimoto's name, you know he's the Iron Chef 
And um, he actually really, I learned this while I was there. I had a chance to uh, briefly meet him. He was on his way out, so not real interested in spending a lot of time chatting with me. But he loves Hawaii, and so it's not unusual to find him in the kitchen. His staff told me that that's uh, not altogether unusual, which if you go, if you've ever been to any of those name restaurants, it's very unusual to find the actual chef in the kitchen. So um, I think you've got it. You, that's a that's a great place to start. The other thing is is you know Hawaii is a is a is a, you know a, a mixed blend of cultures, mm -hmm. and um, we have a lot of foods here that are a little different and, and that you might not try elsewhere. If you get a chance to try um, masubi, a spam masubi, which is basically looks like a spam sushi. It's a uh, salty, tasty goodness that is perfect for a post beach snack. I, and you can find those, I mean, you can find them at 7-Eleven, you can find them at the ABC store, you can find them all over the place. It's usually warm also, which is really, it's, it, it, it is, it takes, it, you feel like, <laughs> you feel like you need a little adventure to try it, but once you have it, I guarantee you'll be hooked. Um, and then, you know, uh, our plate lunch is, uh, what we call plate lunch is, uh, Basically, um, you know, macaroni salad, what everyone else calls macaroni salad, we just call salad. Um, and uh, usually a pork, a, a Kahlua pork or something along those lines. It's, it's meant to be eaten kind of quickly on the fly, but be, it's, it's a little carb overload, but it's meant to push you through the day. And if you can find a place that a truck, uh, someplace on the side of the road, one of our drive-ins, l and drive-ins, that's doing a plate lunch, pull over and go ahead and take advantage of that because... That's a really great example of how uh, we eat here regularly. I mean, I, I should do a blog post on this because I, we, I, the food here is different. Um, there's definitely an Asian influence, not just Japanese, but Korean and Chinese as well. Um, we also have a, a, a Filipino influence here on foods. So the foods that are here are really, really different than the foods uh, elsewhere in the United States. And so take advantage of that. I should do a blog post on it with some recommendations and some ideas. You should. You'll have to let us know if you get around to Thanks. that. I will okay. definitely that. All right, Tara. Well, that's about it for us. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. Meet you. It was great meeting you, too. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.